What's happening, Vinyl Community? Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you guys are when you're watching this. This is a collection update for you guys. This one's a little bit of a change of pace, because usually if you watch my channel, you'll notice that a lot of my uh, updates have a lot of jazz albums in them, but this one actually has a lot of rock in it. So, a bit of a change of pace. But the first one I'm going to show you is actually a jazz album. If you watched my uh, most recent unboxing, a couple of you guys had commented or sent me DMs that the video cut off a little bit prematurely. I thought I'd just bring that up. Uh, basically what happened was I was filming it and the phone, my phone started to act up and it just prematurely cut the video off. But the reason why I uploaded it was that's the true unboxing warts and all. It's the first time I put eyes on that album so I felt that it was a true experience for you guys instead of just reshooting it and this, that, and the other. So I hope that explains what happened. But this first one is... Uh, AS9163. This is Tom Scott and the California Dreamers on the Honeysuckle Breeze. This is a 1972 second press stereo on that red and black ADC Paramount uh, impulse label. This is more vocal jazz, which is not really my lane, but the reason why I picked this one up is I tend, I'm a big fan of like early 90s hip hop and for those of you that don't know, I'm sure there's a lot of you that do. Um, a lot of early hip-hop sampled everything from rock, but they specifically, in a lot of cases, used old soul, um, especially a lot of jazz. And this particular album was used on a very famous early 90s uh, track called They Reminisce Over You um, by uh, Pete Rock and DJ Smooth. And uh, the track that they used had a sax solo that was only about five, seven seconds long. And that's what they used. So that's made this album particularly desirable. And they've creeped, crept up in price over time. And uh, so I figured I was going get, to get in on this one while I could still find one. So this one was actually a sealed copy. Like I said, if you follow my channel, you'll, you, know, uh, you can go back and watch the unboxing that I did for it. But happy to have it. And like I said, not normally in my lane, but I'm happy to have it just purely for the uh, nostalgic reason. And uh, I'm an impulse junkie, so any impulse is a good impulse in my opinion. Next one's actually a minor grail for me. Um, it's not a true first pressing, but I'm perfectly happy with it because of the condition. So the Velvet Underground, White Light, Right Beat. Stereo pressing. I believe from my research this is a 1970 pressing so I think second or third I think it's a third press but what made me happy about it is this sucker is clean as clean can be and in this day and age to find albums like this such iconic albums in this good of shape is getting harder and harder to do by the day um, Velvet Underground releases are a little bit difficult um, to figure out exactly what pressing you have. In this case, um, obviously you look at the dead wax, but one of the things that's a big giveaway is the, the front cover. There's supposed to be a skull here, which you can see, but it's very, very faint. And earlier pressings actually have um, Andy Warhol credited right under here, which he's not there. So this would be, a, like I said, I believe it's a third press, but... It's an iconic album, really has no more to be said about it. Uh, it's one of those albums I've wanted for a long time. I hope I can upgrade to a true first pressing, but if I can't, this is going to be my forever copy, so happy to have that one. Another iconic album, not particularly expensive, but a classic nonetheless. So CSNY, Deja Vu. A little backstory on this album, I've owned it a couple different times. I actually, my first copy I picked up when I was a teenager in North Texas for two bucks in a bargain bin. And don't know what happened to it. I lucked into a mid 70s pressing earlier this year, but I'm a sucker for OG, so I had to have an OG. And went on a recent digging trip a few days ago and found this uh, first Monarch pressing in the bin for a really good price. Very, very happy to have it. This album is one of those that I would say, if you're ever in a debate over what sounds better, um, digital or analog, you know, the whole CD, vinyl debate, 
this album is definitely one of those that, that wins the debate for vinyl hands down. You have a clean copy of this, you put it on with a good stereo system, the sucker will blow you away. Um, not a huge fan of the their solo albums, but this album is such an iconic one. And I know they uh, came out with a uh, box set, or uh, anniversary box set earlier this year, and I may, may down the line pick that one up. But again, really, really happy to pick this one up. This one actually came in today. I haven't even had a chance to clean it yet, but I've listened to it online, and it was one I had to have again. I'm an impulse junkie. This is a Impulse A69, Yusef Latif, Live at Peps. It's the first stereo pressing. That infamous orange and black. Pretty clean. It's got a couple paper scuffs, um, but all in all, pretty clean. Of course, like with any impulse. Gotta show that gatefold. Pretty clean, pretty clean example. It uh, features Yusef Latif on tenor sax, oboe, argol, and shamas, Richard Williams on trumpet, Mike Knox on piano, Ernie Farrow on bass, James Black on drums. This is one of those that, for me, being a live album really showcases what a live album can sound like if the, the everything just falls right into place. And it's a, it's a really awesome album and I highly recommend it if you find it out in the wild. Yusuf is one of those that I actually didn't know a lot about. Um, friend, uh, Chris Tunes from the Man Cave is a big uh, Latif fan. He's the one that actually turned me on to his music and uh, I've become a fan. So. I'm in the process of acquiring his impulse work and adding it to the collection one by one. But this is a good one to start on. The seller I got the Latif from actually um, makes a habit of giving gifts an extra album or two as a thank you. And I, I've never actually heard of this one, but it's been recommended, so I'm going to give it a listen. It's the uh, Paul Horn Quintet, Monday Monday, um, arranged and conducted by Oliver Nelson. This is a first stereo pressing. Deep groove, super, super clean. I'm a huge Oliver Nelson fan, so anything that's got his name on it, I will like, gladly give a, at least one listen to. So I'm curious about this one because it's got, you know, some 60s pop classics on it, Eight Miles High, Norwegian Wood, Monday, Monday, etc. So I was really curious about that one. This next one is actually one that I was really happy to acquire back in the collection. Um, when I was a kid, one of the things, my dad had a really big uh, eclectic music collection, and one of his oddball ones was he was a huge Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention fan. He had the first couple albums, and one of them disappeared or walked off. We don't know what happened to it. So I've been trying to find a clean stereo or mono copy of this particular album, and on the same digging trip, one fell into my lap, so. Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention, we're only in it for the money. This is a first stereo pressing, that deep groove, pretty damn clean. Let's see, i show the back of that. And get cold. It's a parody on the uh, famous uh, famous cover of uh, the Beatles' Sgt. Pepper. Honestly, I kind of wish they had used that for the front of this album, but that's yeah, okay. But it's a, it's definitely an oddball one. Um, not a huge Zappa fan, but what I like, I like his uh, catalog. And this one for me, it's, it's a little zany. It's definitely a, it's definitely set in the time frame when the album came out in the late '60s. You know, little references to, little references to, you know, obviously the drug usage in San Francisco and stuff like that, and little hints to uh, Vietnam and that kind of thing. Um, my favorite uh, track on this album is Let's Make the Water Turn Black, and uh, it's just a great album. Again, it's an eclectic thing. You either like it or you don't, but I love it, and I'm happy to have this one back in my collection. 
This one, next one, was actually one that I wasn't familiar with. I'd seen the cover quite a few times, but I'd never listened to it before. So I finally um, took a chance and really loved it. This is McDonald and Giles. This is a 1971 second press. For those of you that don't know, uh, Giles and McDonald are actually part of King Crimson. So this was just, I guess, like a kind of a quasi-solo work that they did. It's a little bit all over the place. Um, you know, it, it, you know, part of the roots of their of where they came from, that kind of thing. But it's it's soft in parts and kind of hard in parts. But all around, it's a good album. And I got this at a smoking price. And even being a second press, I was happy to grab it. And it's all VG Plus condition. And I'm working my, I'm trying to work my way back to rock music. Um, I love my jazz and I will always love my jazz and that will never stop. But um, I just wanted to add some more rock albums to my collection and, and kind of build the uh, collection beyond one category of music. So I'm, all, I'm still learning about new albums here and there. So this was a nice one. This was a nice addition to the collection. I'm really happy to have it. Pretty much happy to have everything in my collection. I mean, that's kind of an oxymoron there, but anyway. And the final one's actually kind of, it's an un, it's a relatively unknown one, um, but it's a grill. This is a Kane Pound of Flesh. This is a first pressing. A few, a few minor paper scuffs, but all in all, really, really nice copy. A um, little bit of ring wear too. This one's kind of a weird one, because um, this one was actually put out in the mid-70s. It's solid hard rock. Uh, if you follow uh, Dylan at Noble Records' um, channel, he actually talked about this in, a, in an older video. It's, it's uh, one of those that was put out on a smaller label, um, kind of flew under the radar, but great stuff. They own, from my understanding, this band only did this one album, and just faded into existence, but it's, it's solid smoker, just just really dirty, 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 um, hard, 70s hard rock, and it's one of those I've been after for quite a long time. It's not an easy one to come by, it's not super expensive, you can pick it up between 80 and 100 bucks, but it's not an easy one to find because of the fact it's a smaller press, so I was really happy to add that one to the collection, and it's another another rock album for the uh, collection, but if, I hope you guys enjoyed what you saw here. If you like what you see, please click like and subscribe. In the next couple weeks, I've got a couple of absolute smokers coming in the mail, and those will be in the next update video. So again, until then, it was a pleasure speaking with you guys, and we'll talk again soon.